Hi, now I'm going to be uh, explaining about the kinetic theory of gases. So basically, the kinetic theory of gases is a concept that explains how gases behave, basically. Um, the idea is that gases are made up of a lot of tiny particles that are called atoms or molecules that are always moving around. Now, um, the kinetic theory of gases tells us that these particles or atoms um, in a gas are always moving and they don't stick each other but they only bump to one another or I guess you could say interact by bumping each other. That means the particles in a gas are free to move around and spread out to fill out the container as for example in which way gases can expand and fill up the container. The kinetic theory of gases also say that the particles in a gas have a certain amount of energy, which is usually called the kinetic energy, um, or the energy of motion of these atoms. The more energy the particles have, the faster they move in the container, obviously. And this is why the temperature of a gas affects how fast the particles move or interact or bump with one another. And when the temperature of the gas increases, the particles will move faster and it will go vice versa, uh, which means when the temperature decreases, the particles will move slower. So the thermodynamics have three laws. The first law was founded in 1769 and was published in 1774. The second law was founded in 1824 and the third law was founded in 1906. Thirty years later, Rolf H. Palmer found another law of thermodynamics that was supposed to go before the first law of thermodynamics, so they named it the Zeroff Law. The Zeroff Law stated that if two systems are in a thermal equilibrium with the third system, then those two systems are in a thermal equilibrium with each other. For example, if A is in a thermal equilibrium with B and B is in a thermal equilibrium with C, that makes A and C a thermal equilibrium with each other. This means if two objects are in the same temperature, there will be no heat flowing between them. So this makes a temperature as an indicator of a thermal equilibrium. If two objects are in a thermal equilibrium with the thermometers that reach the same temperature, then those objects are in a thermal equilibrium with each other, which therefore it allows us to collect any kinds of thermodynamics data in our laboratories. Hello and welcome to our exploration in the first law of thermodynamics, which is a fundamental principle in the world of physics that govern energy. So, the first law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Energy can only be transformed from a form into another. Okay, so to bring this up, let's have a simple terminology where energy is transformed. Well, let's just consider a couple of faulty that are cooling down. As it loses heat to the surrounding environment, the thermal energy decreases. This change in internal energy is equal to the heat transfer minus warmth that occurred in the system. But the first law tells us that energy can be transformed from a form to another form, such as mechanical to thermal, chemical to electrical, but the total amount of the energy remaining constant. From the food we eat to the electricity that pouring up our homes, the first law of thermodynamics underlies every energy transfer and energy transformation in the universe. So remember, whether it is a cup of coffee that are cooling down or a rocket that are going up to the sky, the first law of thermodynamics reminds us that energy will always conserve. Thank you, and let's hear the explanation and the second law of thermodynamics that will explain by my friend. Now we're going to talk about the second law of thermodynamics. The first most important thing about it is the, uh, is the concept of entropy. Entropy is the measure of disorder within a system. Uh, this means that usually when a process happens, the amount of entropy tends to increase, meaning more disorder occurs. Uh, next is heat flow. Uh, it says that heat flow uh, is sp uh, spontaneously wants to flow, uh, flow from, hoarder, ho mm, from hotter to colder. Uh, this is also due to the entropy system. An example of entropy is when uh, you stir 
sugar into a drink. It's more, disor it's more disorderly as the process of dissolving continues. Also, uh, next we also have the concept of the uh, maximum limit of heat conversion to work. This also governs that we cannot have a perfectly uh, efficient system that converts heat energy into work perfectly efficient. That's uh, the, the efficiency amount is explained by the second law. Thank you. The third, law, the third law of thermodynamics is a theorem founded by Walter Nernst. This theorem covers the possibility of the coldest temperature possible or absolute zero or zero Kelvin or minus 270 degrees Celsius. This theorem basically states that the entropy of any crystalline substance at absolute zero will be equal to zero. This means that as the temperature decreases, the internal energy of a system decreases, thus a decrease in the kinetic energy of the system. This also means that the state of a substance would always be a solid at absolute zero. Uh, despite this, it is impossible for any system to reach this temperature, no matter what or how many step steps are taken. Thus making this theorem, in the words of Professor Dave, seems rather mythical.